In the summer of 1505, Martin Luther, a young man with his sights set on a legal career, was suddenly caught in a terrifying storm in Germany. The Catholic Church ruled supreme at the time, but as lightning struck dangerously close, Luther, fearing death, desperately promised Saint Anne he'd become a monk if he lived. The storm calmed and Luther kept his word, abandoning law for monastic life. This intense moment not only redirected his life, but also eventually sparked the monumental Protestant Reformation. He had survived that storm, but a new storm was on the horizon for the Catholic Church. The Church positioned itself as the soul's caretaker, dictating notions of right and wrong. Priests, in particular, were central in guiding individuals through life's milestones and moral dilemmas often being the first point of consultation over family or friends due to their societal stature. With the majority of the population illiterate, especially in Latin, the language of the Bible, the clergy's interpretations of the scriptures were the primary, if not the only, religious narratives accessible to most people. From the 18th century onwards, with the establishment of the Papal States, the Catholic Church held significant political power alongside its spiritual authority. Although corruption within the Church had existed earlier, it became more prominent from the 8th century and reached a peak by the 15th century, just before the Reformation. During this time, Many leaders within the church, including popes, cardinals and bishops, were seen as focusing more on personal and worldly gains than on spiritual guidance. Two practices, in particular, contributed to the clergy's wealth and the growing perception of corruption. The first was the veneration of holy relics in churches. These items, such as the bones of saints, their clothing or other possessions, were considered sacred and drew pilgrims to churches and pilgrimage sites. Visitors often donated money for the privilege of viewing these relics. Over time, the desire to attract pilgrims and their donations led many churches to acquire collections of relics, some of which were of dubious authenticity. The second practice was the sale of indulgences. The church taught that souls would spend time in purgatory to atone for their sins after death. However, they claimed this period could be reduced through prayers, good deeds, and especially by purchasing indulgences. These were sold as a way to lessen the time one or their loved ones would spend in purgatory, effectively monetizing salvation. These practices, along with the Church's exclusive control over the interpretation of the Bible in Latin, did not go unnoticed. Some European clerics and thinkers began to question and criticize the Church's teachings and conduct, setting the stage for significant religious and cultural upheavals. Reformers like John Wycliffe and Jan Hus were early voices opposing the corrupt practices of the Church. Despite their condemnation and Wycliffe's posthumous burning, their ideas endured and influenced others. Martin Luther, deeply affected by what he saw at the Vatican and the widespread sale of indulgences, became a pivotal figure. His critical observations led him to assert that salvation was achievable through faith alone, a principle known as sola fide. Luther's 95 Theses 
which he reputedly nailed to the door of All Saints Church in Wittenberg on October 31, 1517, critiqued the Church's practices and became the foundation for the Protestant Reformation. This act, whether symbolic or actual, marked the beginning of a profound religious shift. In particular, the selling of indulgences by Johann Tetzel in Germany to fund the reconstruction of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome was a catalyst for Luther's defiance. Luther's bold proclamation challenged the Church's authority and altered the course of religious and cultural history. His journey, ignited by predecessors like Wycliffe and Hus and propelled by his own convictions, set the stage for widespread religious reform and the eventual fragmentation of Christendom into various denominations. The 95 Theses, propelled by the advent of the printing press, spread swiftly throughout Europe. Luther's bold critique, especially his challenge to the Pope's control over purgatory, confronted papal supremacy head-on. He provocatively questioned why the Pope, with purported power over purgatory, wouldn't empty it purely out of compassion. Luther's defiance quickly drew the ire of the papacy. In 1521, following his dramatic act of burning a papal decree, Luther was excommunicated. That year, he stood before the Diet of Worms, an imperial council, where Emperor Charles V demanded his recantation. Luther's steadfast refusal led to his declaration as an outlaw. He sought refuge in Wartburg Castle under Frederick III's protection, Elector of Saxony. There, Luther undertook the monumental task of translating the New Testament into German, democratizing access to the scriptures. Simultaneously in Switzerland, Ulrich Zwingli had been pushing for church reforms since 1519. While Zwingli and Luther developed their ideas separately, their thoughts echoed each other. Another influential figure, John Calvin, also emerged, heavily inspired by Luther's writings. Calvin's ideas initially spread in Paris, but facing Catholic hostility, he relocated to Basel, Switzerland. These reformers, each with their unique perspectives and teachings, significantly contributed to the broad religious reformation that dramatically altered the Christian landscape in Europe. After relocating to Geneva, John Calvin continued to expand his religious influence. Calvin envisioned religion as a personal connection between individuals and God, not a means of oppression by the clergy. He encouraged people to learn directly from the scriptures, advocating for increased literacy and education. In Geneva, Calvin established a model church with elected pastors, enhancing education and transforming the city into a hub of Protestant theology. However, Calvin's time in Geneva was marked by conflict and intolerance toward opposing views. His involvement in the execution of Michael Servetus in 1553 over theological differences highlighted the authoritarian nature of his regime, contradicting his criticisms of religious oppression. Calvin's teachings spread throughout Europe, influencing regions like Germany, Scotland, England, France and the Netherlands. His followers, known as Calvinists or Huguenots in France and Luther, sought not to create new sects, but to reform the Church's corrupt practices and make the Bible accessible. Yet, the entrenched resistance from the Church led to the emergence of new Protestant denominations. Among these were the Anabaptists from Switzerland, known for their radical beliefs, including opposition to military service, advocacy for a simple life, 
and adult baptism. Their views attracted severe persecution from both Catholic and Protestant authorities. The Reformation also served political purposes, offering European nobles a pretext to diminish the Church's influence and bolster their own power. While some nobles were genuinely aligned with Reformation ideals, others saw it as an opportunity for political gain. This often led to violent outcomes, including the widespread destruction of monastic and religious properties as Europe reeled from the religious, social and political upheavals of this era. And that concludes the third episode of our series, Tracing the Journey of Christianity. We examined the nascent stages of Christianity and the split between the Eastern and Western churches. In the previous episodes, we journeyed through the early days of Christianity and the split between the Eastern and Western churches. Coming up, we'll explore the history of the Anglican. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out on our upcoming videos. Have thoughts or questions about what you just watched? Leave a comment below. We love hearing from you and we try to respond to as many comments as we can. Also, for more content and behind the scenes updates, follow us on X. And remember, sharing is caring. If you think someone else might enjoy this video, please share it with them. See you in the next video.